Hi. Very good morning. I'm Dr. Janak Patel. Today we'll be talking about what we call as intervals. That is measurements of timings, duration. We call one small square is 0 0.04 second, and one large box which contains five small square is 0.2 seconds. So keep this thing in mind. Again, same, you see only what you look for, you recognize only what you know, and you will remember only what you understand. So I'll try to make it as simple as possible so that you can understand well and you will remember for lifetime. So we are going to talk about intervals. Go on looking at more and more ECG. Listen to more and more person. So you will know more and more and you will be able to identify the abnormalities of intervals in ECG. Normally we use the intervals one for calculating the heart rate. That is RR interval, PP interval, which we have already discussed in a previous ECG video lectures on a rate. Now, in this lecture, we'll be discussing on PR interval, QT interval, and QRS interval. But QRS interval, we'll be discussing more in case of a QRS segment, we call QRS. So, RR interval is mainly utilized for calculating ventricular heart rate, and PP interval is mainly utilized for calculating atrial rate. In a normal person, RR is always equal to PP. So all RR and PP are same. If they are not normal, if they are not equal, there is definitely an abnormal rhythm or we call as irregular, which may be irregularly irregular or regularly irregular. We are not going to discuss this. We will be discussing in a lecture what we call as rhythm. So we will go through now regarding a PR interval, etc. So these are the different intervals. What is PR interval? PR interval means from the beginning of the P wave till beginning of QRS complex. We don't call that as a PQ interval, but we call it as a PR because in good number of ECG complex, you don't have a Q wave. Q wave is seen in a very few lids. Hence, we always use the word PR interval. A normal PR interval is three small box to maximum five small box. That is 0.12 second to 0.2 second. So this is normal PR interval. If PR interval is less than two small box, that is 0 0.08 second, we call it as a short PR interval. And if it is more than five small box, that is more than 0.2 second, it is abnormal. We call it as a prolonged PR interval. We'll be discussing in further detail. Normally, we in this particular, we are not going to discuss regarding a QRS interval, but QRS interval is 0.08 to 0.1 second. That is two small box to two and a half small box, but not more than three small box. That is 0.12 second. When it is more than 0.12 second, we call it a broad QRS complex. Normal is between 0.08 to 0.1 second. So that is normal QRS. There is no disorder where you get a narrow, narrow QRS complex. What is QT interval? QT interval is beginning of the Q wave till end of the T wave. That is called QT interval. But QT interval will change with heart rate. Hence, you try to calculate corrected QT interval. We call QTC interval. And that QTC interval is normal, is 0.35 second. To 0.44 second or we call 9 small square to maximum 11 small square that is 0.35 to 0.44 second or roughly it should be less than half of RR interval means if RR interval is 10 small square then QT interval should be less than 5 small square that is normal QT interval whether there is a heart rate is fast or slow that is the simplest way to calculate and if it is more than half of RR interval we call QT interval is prolonged. So 
while calculating you will have to draw a two vertical lines from the beginning of the wave till end of the period and that will measure the number of small square which will tell you the interval that is pr interval qt interval and qrs duration we don't call as qrs interval so this is measurement of different components qt interval etc now we are going through what we call as the i'm just putting one slide which is giving you little idea regarding pr segment what is pr segment pr segment is usually isoelectric now this segment means from end of the p wave till beginning of the qrs complex it does not include p wave when you include from beginning of the p wave till end of qr end of pr interval that is till qrs complex we call as a pr interval but this pr segment is usually isoelectric now when it is elevated more than 5 mm it is 100% abnormal and this is very important in certain conditions so if it is depressed downward more than 8 mm then it is abnormal now if you see this pr segment up by more than 5 mm it is in favor of acute pericarditis or atrial infarct same way if it is pulled down more than 8 mm it is in acute pericarditis atrial infarct or pseudo depression in atrial flutter now this is very well seen in an avr so in an avr if you see an pr segment elevation or depression it is try to think of pericarditis or atrial infarct this is one important thing try to remember sometime you will be able to pick up this pericarditis or atrial infarct if there is an elevation or depression of a pr segment now what is pr interval from the beginning of the p wave till beginning of the qrs complex we call as a pr interval we have already told you it is less than it is between 3 small square to 5 small square that is 0.12 second to 0.2 second if it is less than 2 small square we call a short pr interval and if it is more than 5 small square we call as a prolonged pr interval so 3 to 5 small square so pr interval can be calculated if p wave is present then we can calculate and i have already told you that short pr interval is characteristic less than 0.8 second and it is in wpw syndrome and lgl syndrome while prolonged pr interval is mainly in case of different types of av blocks first degree av block second degree av block mobis type 1 mobis type 2 in these two condition you will have a prolonged pr interval more than 0.2 second so we'll be talking about that sooner if p wave is absent you cannot calculate the pr interval so don't try to calculate pr interval if person has got p wave absent classical example or p wave is not related to qrs complex so classical example of those complete heart block and av dissociation where p wave is independent qrs complex is independent in this condition you cannot calculate pr interval in case of atrial flutter because atrial rate is so fast you cannot calculate the pr interval and p wave are more than qrs complex in atrial fibrillation there is no p wave at all so you cannot calculate pr interval in all ventricular rhythm ventricular premature beat ventricular tachycardia ventricular fibrillation there are no p wave so you cannot calculate in sa block and sinus arrest there is no p wave no qrs complex hence you cannot calculate pr interval in supraventricular tachycardia because of a very fast ventricular rate p wave are usually merged into t wave and there are no p wave appearance hence you cannot calculate the pr interval in junctional rhythm usually p wave is just before qrs complex or just after qrs complex or p wave is inside the qrs complex again here you cannot calculate the pr interval hence in this conditions do keep it in mind you cannot calculate pr interval always remember this for life time now short pr two classical condition wpw syndrome and lgl syndrome now in this you can see that there is a short pr and it is a broad qrs complex t wave may be in the same direction or maybe in opposite direction and 
in the ascending part of the QRS complex, you've got a small notch, we call it delta wave. This is characteristic of a WPW syndrome. In LGL syndrome, this delta wave is not there because there is a bypass at the level of AV node and that is called as a LGL syndrome. While in a WPW syndrome, there is a bundle of Kent which is present in a left ventricle, so which is connecting LA to LV by an accessory bundle of Kent. We call that as a WPW syndrome and that will produce a short PR interval. In a junctional rhythm, because a P wave comes just before a QRS complex, the PR interval is very short. But if P wave is not seen, you cannot calculate the PR interval in a junctional rhythm. So ideally, the classical example of a short PR interval is this too. And we don't consider junctional rhythm as a classical example of a short PR interval. Only in case of a P wave present just before QRS complex, you will have a short PR interval. While long PR interval, where the PR interval is more than 0.2 seconds, or that is more than five small square, we'll call that as a heart block. And this is characteristic of first degree heart block. We'll be talking in detail in a blocks. But we'll talk a little bit regarding a first degree and second degree AV blocks. So short PR in AV junctional rhythm, WPW syndrome, and LGL syndrome. WPW syndrome is Wolf Parkinson White syndrome, and LGL is called Lowen Gannock Levine syndrome. So this is a classical example of a short PR interval in a junctional rhythm. You can see a P wave is just preceded before a QRS complex. You can see a P wave just before a QRS complex. So the PR interval is very, very short. And P wave is in opposite direction. It is not in the direction of the QRS complex. Hence, this has to be from junction. So this is a junctional rhythm characteristic. And as the rate is fast, this is a junctional tachycardia. If you see the rate is fast. Normal junctional rate is between 40 to 60. Here the rate is more than 100. So this is called junctional tachycardia. So short PR interval example, the rhythm wise junctional and rate wise tachycardia. So we call it the junctional tachycardia. P wave before each QRS complex. PR interval is very, very short. And RR interval is constant, narrow, and P wave is inverted. QRS complex is narrow. Rate is tachycardia, hence this will be called junctional tachycardia. Now, this particular ECG shows you that there is a wide QRS complex. P wave is just before a QRS complex, so PR interval is very short. You can see here in this particular, there is a normal PR. This is a normal sinus rhythm. You can see a P wave, PR interval from beginning of the P wave till QRS complex. It is approximately five small square, four small square. So this is 0.16. And you've got a normal QRS complex with T wave upright. Here you can see a short PR interval. P wave is just before the QRS complex. So it is a short PR interval, broad QRS complex. And on this ascending limb, you will have a delta wave. This is called Wolf Parkinson White syndrome. And usually the T wave is in opposite direction. This is classical WPW syndrome. And invariably, this results into atrioventricular re-entry tachycardia. You can see here, here there is a accessory bundle. So the impulse which comes from AV node, which will re-enter back, which will re-enter back into atria. So this will be re-entry through this bundle of Kent. This is called bundle of Kent. Short PR interval. This is bundle of Kent. So that will produce a re-entry tachycardia from ventricle into atrium, not via the AV node. So this is the reason why it is called AVRT, atrioventricular re-entry tachycardia. And it will produce usually short or narrow QRS complex tachycardia. And sometimes because of an aberrant conduction, you can have a broad QRS complex tachycardia, but it will be supraventricular tachycardia, not ventricular tachycardia. So here you can make out very clearly a short PR and there is a little notch. This is called delta wave. That is because of passing through the accessory bundle, passing through the accessory bundle here. And that is very, very characteristic. 
you can have a bundle mainly on the left side very rarely you got a bundle on the right side and when it is on the right side it will give you a left bundle prime block pattern and when it is on the left side it will give you right bundle prime block pattern this is a very characteristic delta wave you can get a short pr delta wave broad qrs complex usually t wave is in the opposite direction t wave is usually in the opposite direction and if it is in the left ventricle you will have a dominant r wave in v1 to v3 that is we call as a right bundle prime block pattern delta wave now this is lgl where it bypasses through the av node so you have got a narrow qrs complex short pr it is a very very short pr you will have a very see this p very short pr and t wave is in opposite direction this is called loan genon levine syndrome the only difference between this and wpw in wpw it is a broad qrs in lgl it is a narrow qrs but it is because of accessory bundle in lgl the bundle is close to av node so it bypasses through the av node only so that gives rise to a short or narrow qrs complex no delta wave pr interval is less than 0.8 second and wpw syndrome will give rise to atrio ventricular reentry tachycardia this is again a good example of a wpw you can see a delta wave clearly and there is a very short pr interval you can see a very short pr interval now we come to prolonged qr interval prolonged pr interval is a classical example is a first degree av block where p wave is preceding all qrs complex p wave is upright qrs complex is narrow t wave is upright each p wave is followed by a qrs complex or we say that each qrs complex is preceded by a p wave but if you look at the pr interval pr interval is more than 0.2 second and all pr interval are equal this is classical first degree av block which you might see in 0.5% of a normal population we call is a idiopathic very rare condition but by and large you will come across pr interval prolongation in a drug induced very classical example is digoxin beta blocker and amiodarone and you may see also in case of an acute myocardial infarction particularly inferior wall infarct or lateral wall infarct it is because of rca or lca right circumflex artery or left circumflex artery and you can see also in a ischemic heart disease it increases along with the age so it is more common in a old individual you can see even a first degree av block and it is considered as a minor criteria in a jones criteria in a case of an acute rheumatic fever and you will have a pr prolongation in a case of a hyperkalemia and as the potassium level increases p wave will disappear and you will not be able to see a p wave presence and this is characteristic of a hyperkalemia now we'll see some of those particular ecgs now you can see here that there is a delay in a pr interval because of this particular in an av block first degree av block this impulse takes a long time to travel and that will produce a prolonged pr interval while in a second and third degree av block there is a block at the level of av node that will produce different types of discharge which can start from bundle of is or from bundles will be going through that shortly so this is ideal case of a classical pr prolongation is a first degree av block only but we'll be showing you mobis type 1 and mobis type 2 because in complete heart block you cannot calculate the pr interval because p wave is independent and qrs complex is independent hence you cannot calculate the p wave or a pr interval in case of a complete heart block and av dissociation so we'll now show you a ecg of a first degree and second degree av block now i already told you that all p wave are transmitted p wave is generated from sa node 
it will be transmitted through AV node, but there is a delay in a transmission at the level of AV node. That's why we call it as a first degree AV block. And because of that, there is a prolongation of PR interval. All QRS complex are narrow. QRS complex are upright, T wave is upright, and P wave is all P wave are identical. All PR interval are identical, characteristic of first degree AV block. While in case of a second degree AV block, we have got two varieties. We call as a Mobis type 1 and Mobis type 2. In Mobis type 1, there is a progressive lengthening of PQ interval because there is a delay in transmission of an impulse from AV node to bundle office. This produces gradual increase in the PR interval. So initially, the PR interval may be close to normal. Gradually, it increases. And then one P wave is not transmitted. This is classical of Mobis type 1. While in Mobis type 2, there is a constant PQ interval where first P wave might have a normal PRS, PR complex. Second P wave may not be transmitted through the AV node to the bundle of his, which will produce no conduction. Hence, you will have no QRS complex following that P wave. Same thing happens in a Mobis type 1. But in Mobis type 1, you have got a gradual increase in the PR interval. While here, PR interval remains constant and one P wave is not transmitted. So usually there is a fixed block. We call 2 is to 1 or 3 is to 1 block. We'll show you that. While in a case of a complete hard block, the P wave is independent. QRS complex is independent. So there is a depolarization of atrium by a SA node. But Ventricle depolarized because of the ventricular focus, which is not controlled by AV node, SA node, because impulse from AV node cannot be transmitted to a ventricle because there is a complete block at the level of AV node. That's why the P wave is independent, QRS complex is independent, atrial rate is faster because it is a SA node rate. It will be between 60 to 100 per minute, while ventricular rate will be an idioventricular rate which will be between 20 to 40. Hence, P wave will be more, QRS complex will be less. This is the characteristics of a third degree heart block. Now you can have a look at this particular. You can see in this first, this is a rhythm strip of lead two. You can see this is a P wave followed by a QRS complex. P wave followed by a QRS complex. Each QRS complex has got a P wave. QRS complex is narrow. All are in same direction. And if you calculate the PR interval, it is 0.34 second, which is more than 0.2 second. Hence, this is a prolonged PR interval. And along with the pro prolonged PR interval, you have got a narrow QRS complex. And this is called first degree AV block. And if you see properly that all PR interval are same. If you see, all PR interval are same. All these are same, identical. And this is a first degree V block. Here also, it is same. You can see all PR intervals are prolonged. All PR interval are prolonged, and they are same. So when you get all PR interval prolonged, each QRS complex is preceded by P wave. All PR interval identical. All QRS complex are identical. All QRS complex are narrow. And P and QRST, are in the same direction. It is a classical diagnosis of first degree AV block. I'm keeping it for some time. You can have a nice look here. So PR is fixed, more than 0.2. All P wave are before QRS complex. And for one P wave, there is one QRS complex. Classical first degree V block. Again, you can have a look. This is again a first degree V block. Now, in a hyperkalemia also. Now, the difference to identify here, you can see there is a prolongation of PR interval, but QRS complex is wide. So, whenever you see a PR interval prolongation with prolonged QRS complex and there is a pulling of T wave and T wave is peak 
or we call tall T wave. See this T wave, it is tall. See this T wave, it is tall. So three things, wide QRS complex, tall T wave and prolonged PR interval, suspect hyperkalemia. And when you don't see P wave, but there is a wide QRS complex and there is a tall T wave. I'll show you in another one. Sorry, I don't have here. Then we call that as a sine wave. That we call as a sine wave. In some other lecture, we'll show you that particular ECG. Now you can see here that first PR is 0.18, normal. Second PR is 0.24, this is prolonged. And now you can see that this P wave is not followed by a QRX complex. Means P wave is generated, that SA node has given an impulse, but now AV node does not allow that impulse to be transmitted. So this is gradual increasing in a PR interval. And one P wave is not transmitted, that is one impulse is not transmitted to AV node to bundle of his. This is called Mobis type one, or we call Van Quebec phenomena, classical. Again, you can see here, right? Now, what you see here, normal PR, normal PR. Now, see this one P wave, not transmitted. The PR is not getting prolonged. PR remains same. And suddenly, there is one P wave which is not transmitted. Again, next P wave is transmitted. This is called Mobis type 2. Now, here for two impulse, one is transmitted. So, we call 2 is to 1 block. We will show you some of the other ECG also. This is called Mobis type 2. Now, you can see here, this is a PR interval. Now, this is further increase, further increase. And then this is not transmitted. Classical when Quebec, or we call Mobis type 1. You can see PR interval. Now this P wave is not transmitted, no QRS complex. So for this 2 P wave, there is 1 QRS complex. We will call this as a Mobis type 2, or we call 2 is to 1 fixed block. Fixed block or classical Mobis type 2. Again, you can have a look here. PR interval, further prolongation, further prolongation, further prolongation, and then now this P wave is not transmitted, and there is a drop peak set here. So there is no QRS complex for this. While in this Mobis type 2, now you can see that normal PR, normal PR, P wave, no QRS complex, no transmission. Again, this PR interval is constant. This fourth P wave is not transmitted. So this is Mobis type 2, where one P wave is not transmitted. But here, we don't see PR prolongation. Well, here, we have got gradual PR prolongation. So ideally, PR prolongation, classical example is first degree V block. And in second degree V block, Mobis type 1 not in Mobis type 2. In Mobis type 2, usually previous QRS complex are normal. Now, if you see such types, now you see here, normal PR interval, one P wave not transmitted, so this is 2 is to 1 block. Then here, two P wave are not transmitted, so this is 3 is to 1 block. Again, there is 2 is to 1 block. So this is changing, 2 is becoming 3, 3 is again becoming 2, that's why this is called advanced second degree AB block. So if you come across such, this will sooner or later will become complete heart block. This is again same, you can see 2 QRS complex, 1, 2 P wave, one QRX complex, there is P wave here, there is a P wave here, there is a P wave here, there is a P wave here, P wave, P wave. So for two, this is a fixed block. This is Mobis type two, fixed block. But this P wave, you can see that 
there is a prolonged PR interval. So sometimes in even movies type 2, you can have a prolonged PR interval. Here you will see that there are three P waves, one, two, and three P waves, followed by a QRS complex. And this PR interval is prolonged. This is fixed three to one block. Again in this, the PR interval is prolonged. So in a Mobis type two, sometimes you do see a person with a fixed block where you can have a PR interval prolongation. So this is example of a two is to one block, three is to one block. This is an another example showing you four is to one block. One P wave is here, second P wave is here, third P wave is here, fourth P wave is here. But you can see that here the PR interval is short, not prolonged. So this is four is to one block, but here the PR interval is normal. So this is fixed block, but in this condition, the PR interval is not prolonged. These are all the example of Mobis type two. Now in a complete heart block, if you see the P wave is independent, QRS complex is independent. Hence, this will, you cannot calculate the PR interval. See this P wave. sorry, is independent. Now, if you see the PP interval is less than RR interval. So, the number of P wave are more than RR. So, P wave are more than QRS complex. Hence, ventricular rate is faster than atrial rate. Here, you can see the QRS complex is narrow. So, the focus for QRS complex is higher up. That is somewhere in bundle of his. While here, the focus is somewhere in the ventricle. So that produces a broad QRS complex with T wave in opposite direction. So this will be with broad QRS idioventricular rhythm. This will be with a narrow QRS complex idioventricular rhythm. And the rate of ventricular complex will be between 20 to 40 per minute. While atrial rate will be between 60 to 100 per minute. So that is usually a classical example of what we call as a complete heart block. So this finishes with your AV blocks, third degree AV block or complete heart block we call. Now this is one example of a AV dissociation. Now what happens in AV dissociation? Ventricle is contracting independently, atrium is contracting independently. Usually the atrial rate is between 60 to 100 per minute. Ventricular rate is between 20 to 40 per minute. And impulse cannot travel from atrium to ventricle and impulse cannot travel from ventricle retrograde to atrium. Hence, this is called AV dissociation. Atrium has been dissociated from ventricle. If now ventricular rate becomes very fast, so QRS complex are more than P wave. So ventricular rate is faster than atrial rate. You will be able to identify AV dissociation very clearly. So this is a classical example of AV dissociation where ventricular rate is faster than atrial rate. You can clearly identify in a, this what we call as a rhythm strip. This arrow shows you a P wave which can be identifiable. And some P wave you cannot identify. So this is a PP interval. RR interval is shorter than the PP interval. Hence the ventricular rate is faster than the atrial rate. This is a classical example of AV dissociation. Here it is in a diagrammatic pattern how it is being shown. This star shows you presence of P wave. These are P wave presence. Some P wave you can identify because they have come between the QRS complex, but some are merged inside the QRS complex, which you cannot identify. We'll be able to identify only by electrophysiological study. So that is an example of AV dissociation. Now here, this is a third degree AV block with just junctional escape. I'm not going into detail. And this is intermittent third degree AV block. You can see here, there is a QRS complex. Now this P wave, there is no transmission, no transmission, no transmission, no transmission. And here, you can see that there is a P wave followed by a normal QRS complex, P wave followed by a normal QRS complex. So here, there is no transmission through a AV node. That's why this is called as a intermittent third degree AV block, intermittent complete heart block, and there is an AV dissociation. So P wave are more than QRS complex. So this is AV dissociation.
Now, this is classical example of an idioventricular rhythm where you can see a broad QRS complex. So, this is a ventricular complex. There is no P wave and ventricular rate is between 20 to 40 per minute. You can see classical broad QRS complex, P wave in opposite direction and no P wave before QRS complex. So, this is classical idio and rate is between 20 to 40 per minute. Idioventricular rhythm. Now we go to the last part we call as a QT interval. Now QT interval is beginning of the Q wave till end of the T wave. Normally it is 9 small square to 11 small square. So 9 small square is 0.35 second. So if it is less than 0.35 second it is considered as a short QT. If it is more than 11 small square that is 0.44 second it is considered as prolonged QT interval. Because of tachycardia, QT interval will become short and during bradycardia, QT interval will be prolonged. So, it will become difficult to adjust that. So, you have to calculate corrected QT interval, we call it a QTC. This is a formula for QTC. That QTC is equal to QT interval divided by square root of RR. This is little tough. So, Try to calculate in a very simplified form. I will give you a very simplified form that if the QT interval is half of RR or less than half of RR, we call that as a normal. And if QT interval is more than half of RR, we call QT prolongation. Short QT intervals are less common. Most common are Q prolonged QT intervals. Now, there is an another technology which is being utilized that QT interval with a heart rate of 70 is equal to 0.4 second. For every 10 heart rate, more or less, minus or add 0.2. So, you add 0.2 for every plus or minus. So, suppose if we take Heart rate is 400 or 100. For 70, it is 0.4. Now, for another 10, so there is 30, so it is 3. You add 2, that is 3 multiplied by 0.2 plus 0.4 second. So, this will make you 0.10. This will be 0.6 plus 0.4. So, it will make you 0.10. So, this you will have to minus from the previous one. So, this will be a very tough things which you try to remember well and good. Otherwise, forget a simple most way. Whatever may be the heart rate, if it is more than half of RR, it is prolonged QT. So, prolonged QT classical example is hypocalcemia and congenital long QT syndrome. Well, short QT is very classically seen in a hypercalcemia. Once in a while, you will see this case because of excess of calcium in your blood, particularly in hyperparathyroidism. Hyperparathyroidism. You will have a hypercalcemia. So, you can have that particular condition. So, more than 0.44, classical example is QT prolongation. Hypocalcemia, acute myocarditis, torsadapointis. These are the conditions which will be produced and we call congenital QT prolongation. So, hypocalcemia also add congenital long QT, hypocalcemia, hypokalemia and acute myocarditis and torsadapointis. So, torsadapointis and do not forget quinidine and procainamide. These are the two drugs which are very commonly cardiotoxic and can produce a prolonged QT. And in nowadays you have come across, you must have heard very commonly the drug which is utilized for your what we call is a rheumatoid arthritis. Now it is also utilized for your COVID-19. We call as hydroxychloroquine. It also increases your QT prolongation. So do remember this will be one of the drugs which should be added in this and you can also have in case of a hypothermia QT prolongation. So, try to look for this prolonged QT. While short QT you will see in a hypercalcemia 
and hyperkalemia. So in hyper, it is short. In hypo, in hypo, you can see here hypercalcemia, hyperkalemia, hyperthermia. It is short QT. While hypocalcemia, hypokalemia, and hypothermia. In this, it is a prolonged QT. And also, don't forget magnesium. In hypomagnesemia, there is a prolonged QT. I have forgotten to mention that. So this is a simple diagram showing you a calcium level. Now here, hypocalcemia will have a prolonged QT. Hypercalcemia will have a short QT. Also, decoxin toxicity can also produce a QT abnormality, particularly short QT with a moustache sign we call. Now here I end my lecture on uh, intervals. I hope this will be helpful to you. See you soon again.